I thank God that I baptised none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I had baptised in my own name. Yes, I also baptised the household of Stephanus. Besides, I do not know whether I baptised any other, for Christ did not send me to baptise, but to preach the gospel, not with words of wisdom, lest the cross should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, to the Jews a stumbling block, to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, whether Jews or Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we share together from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and we've read together verses 10 to 25. One of the strong themes of Scripture is wisdom. But what Paul is pointing out in this passage is that there are two kinds of wisdom. There is the wisdom of God and there is the wisdom of the world. And those who have the wisdom of God see the foolishness of the wisdom of this world. And those who follow the wisdom of this world think that God's wisdom is foolishness. How can declaring a message about Jesus dying on the cross and coming alive again and returning, how can that change people's lives? I heard a gentleman speaking about the city in America, which has many Catholic people in it, and many of them were going to see the Passion of the Christ. And they were taken aback with the intensity of the cruelty and brutality of that event. But the question kept coming up, but so what? This happened nearly 2,000 years ago. What effect does it have on me? Well, this is the issue that Paul is addressing. The wisdom of God is to proclaim this message, that Christ died and rose again, with the promise that those who believe will be saved. I understand the movie did not present the resurrection. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. So it happened to Jesus. So what? How does that affect me? But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Because Jesus rose from the dead. And because he lives, we shall live also when we believe in him. And if we know that we shall live, then that gives us motivation and strength and purpose to live a life of service to God, just as Jesus lived his life for service to God. So the focus of our Christianity is not some other man who might teach us of him. Some had attached themselves to Paul or Apollos or Cephas. It was to be baptised into Christ. The process of physical water baptism is just a sign of something else. So Paul had baptised a few people, but he had not baptised many. He left that for others because the point was that It didn't matter who did the baptizing. It was to be baptized into Christ. That matters. Christ didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Now, what's he mean by that? Well, Paul didn't seek to sway people by worldly arguments, by the wisdom of the Greeks. Remember, he's in a Greek city. Athens was the main Greek city, but Corinth was also a Greek city. And so there were people in Athens who were talking about the wisdom of Socrates and Plato. And the world is still talking about their ideas and their teaching and their influence and their attitudes. That was the wisdom of this world. But Paul is preaching the gospel. 
He's taking a form of words that were delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ and he urges his followers to keep the pattern of sound words. That was the instruction to Timothy so that the words of God should not be corrupted by the wisdom of this world. Unfortunately, many preachers, when they stand up, are not so focused on just making plain the words of God, but they add their own wisdom and they attract people who like the wisdom of this world. But the danger is that the wisdom of the cross is lost. So Paul had a message to preach that was delivered to him by Jesus Christ. It was a message that the world considered foolishness. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And so today, though the gospel has been proclaimed for nearly 2,000 years, yet there are those who say, that old book, why waste your time there? But for those of us who have discovered the power of God through faith in Jesus Christ, then we love that old book. And I trust that's why you're taking time to pause and listen just now. For the wisdom of God is wiser than men. He says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. We see that in society time and time again. Great men stand up and pronounce with their wisdom how they can solve the world's problems. Whether it's a socialist leader, a communist leader, someone who is politically left or someone who is politically right, whether they want to tear down rules or increase the number of rules, we find that all these systems that men put in place do not deliver what was promised because they are based on the wisdom of the world. The wisdom of God is an individual thing. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And so he says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Of course, Paul engaged often in debate with people about the reality and truth, and people were not able to stand against his wisdom, just as they were not able to withstand the wisdom of Jesus. Therefore, they crucified Jesus, and they had Paul in prison, and ultimately he was killed as well. And throughout the ages, those who have not been able to overcome believers have sought to kill them. But this is in fact the, the foolishness of God. For those who die in Christ shall live in Christ. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message that we preach to save those who believe. John's Gospel, I've been meditating on that somewhat in the last few months. And it's incredible the number of times John says, we have to believe. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. We have to accept that. We have to believe it. We have to rely upon it. So much so that we do the things that he said. Now, the Jews kept asking for a sign, despite everything that Jesus did. He'd feed 5,000 and immediately they would say, give us a sign to show that you are from God. Moses brought down bread from heaven. You give us a sign. Well, Jesus performed many signs, but they did not recognize them. The Greeks seek after wisdom. They want to be in charge. They want to be able to explain it all. We don't have to be able to explain it. And the only sign that we're given is the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. To the Jews, a stumbling block. How could the Messiah be crucified? To the Greeks, foolishness. But to those who are called, whether they're Jews or Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. And so we will have more knowledge and wisdom than our teachers, as David says in Psalm 119, when we walk in Christ, in the wisdom of God. For all the fullness of the wisdom of God is hid in Christ Jesus. The foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. We cannot discover all wisdom just by exploring the world. It must be revealed to us. So in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message we preach to save those who believe.